Okay, the last thing we're going to do in the sine and cosine rule chapters is offset and radial surveys. Now this is just the application of sine, cosine and trigonometry. So remember previously we've looked at offsets and we've looked at what we call field diagrams. So I give you the example if we have 0, 12, 30R and that's 39, 26 with a capital T, 45, 36, Q is out here, 66 and P. Now remember these are offsets. So if I was to draw this diagram, it would look very similar to this. All the way up is going to be 66 from S to P. I come up 12 and I've got an offset of 30 directly going out at a right angle to R. From 12 to 39 is a running tally. So that means I'm now going to go an extra 27 until I get to my next offset which comes out the side and it's 26 to point T. From 39 to 45 I'm only going another 6 until I get to my last offset for that side which is going out at 36 to point Q. All the way to the end is from 45 to 66 which is another 21. I can now join up my right angled offsets to create a field diagram or a diagram of my field. Remember sometimes we called this, so it called a field diagram and sometimes we called it a notebook entry. Remember we said it was a surveyor's notebook entry. So what we can then do is use um, the area formula to find the area of this triangle here this triangle here, so that would be one big triangle, two a small triangle, three a small triangle, and four would be area of a trapezium. And you could find the total area of the field. The next sort of thing that you may be able to then do is to find some distances using Pythagoras' theorem. So you may be able to ask to find the perimeter. So you may have to just draw a right angle or a perpendicular line in here and finding that distance, that distance, that distance, that one, and that one using Pythagoras' theorem to be able to find the perimeter of the field. The next type of say, um, surveying that we actually did, but we just very briefly talked about it, um, I may not have even done it with you, you may have done it before I, I took your class over. So the next one that we can look at is called a plain table. Survey. Now, plain table survey is what we call it. It's just a plain table. Sometimes it's called a radial survey because basically the idea is, is that you sit a plain table or a flat table in the middle of a space, in the middle of a field, and on that table you put a piece of paper and then what you're going to do is measure directly out on the angles to... Oh, that wasn't quite right, but anyway. To the sides of your field. So probably a better diagram might be if it looks a little bit like this. And here's your plane table sitting in the middle here. Alright, so this could be point A, B, C, and D. Now you start your first one and then you measure your angles as you go around. So let's say this one was 98 degrees, you know, this one was 63, I don't know, 110, and whatever it works out to be 360 minus would be the last one that appears in there. So let me give you an example. Let's quickly do an example of a plane table survey because this is where you are going to need to do some sine and cosine rule because the reason is it's not right angled triangles anymore. So if I give you a quick example, this one here. So it's triangle FGH. hundred and fifty six degrees in here, ninety eight degrees here. I don't know this angle here, but I know that's point O, O for origin, obviously. I know that's 60 metres. I know this one here is 42. 
And remember what they're measuring is the angle and then they measure the distances out from that table to each of the points. So 37 degrees. I think you can probably hear the people next door mowing their lawn, so I apologise for any extra noise. I'll just see if I can close the door, actually. All right, so then we're looking at that triangle. The question is asking us if we can find the size of angle HOG. So this one just here, HOG. And then it's asking us if we can find the perimeter of the field. So in order to find the perimeter of the field over here, we had right angle triangles, so we would use Pythagoras' theorem. Over here, to find these sides, so even if I just gave them x, y and z just for now, I'm going to need to use my sine and cosine rule, and namely because I'm finding sides and I have no other angles other than the angle in the centre, I'm going to need to use the cosine rule. Now if I have a look, the cosine rule would be giving me one sausage between the side and the angle in the centre, and the two other sides would be giving me my two circles, my A and my B. Let's start off with just finding out this side, this angle here. So fairly straightforward, the size of angle G -O or H -O -G, HOG, that's nice, isn't it? Is going to be 360 minus 156 minus 98, which is going to leave me with 106 degrees, so 106 in here. Okay, so if I'm looking for my first side, which is FG, or I've just given it X for the moment, Remember, my cosine rule for finding sides is c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos c. Remember, the sausage is c, okay? And remember that a and b can be either or of your other two sides. So fg squared for this particular triangle is going to be 42 squared plus 60 squared minus 2 times 42 times 60 cos of 156 degrees. And again, you can go ahead and find what fg squared equals. Square root to find fg. And at that stage, I think you're going to get a really long number. So what we have done in the past is just left it as fg equals the square root of a number. And then what we've gone ahead to do, and we found the perimeter, was all we needed to do was just say it was the square root of this plus the square root of that plus the square root of this, which was a lot easier than having to round at each step because it then meant our final answer was much more incorrect and it was much more affected by the rounding that we'd done at each step. Now I'm not going to do the other sides, but you could similarly do the other sides. So there's your 37 and 60 becomes your A and B and this HG side becomes your C of your triangle with cos 106 being the last thing you would write down. This side being cos 98, okay, and the FH side and you would A and B would be 37 and 42. So you could go ahead and find those sides and then as I said, the perimeter would then be the square root of the first one plus the square root of the second plus the square root of the third one to find your total perimeter. You would get your total perimeter as a dot, dot, dot and then you would round it off to whichever measurement you've been asked to do, if it was the nearest metre, and if you weren't, you just make a decision at that stage and you write the rounding in. The other thing you would be asked to do is, again, not find the perimeter, but find the area, just as we were asked to use it over here. It was generally area formula with right angles. Here we don't have the right angles, so you would be using your area of a triangle rule. So remember the area of a triangle rule is a half AB sine C, and it uses the same diagram as the, as the cosine rule. So you have one sausage and two sides. So you would then be able to do the area of triangle one which would be a half times 42 times 60 times sine of the one in the middle which is 156 degrees equals and you would get a whole lot of numbers and they would be dot, 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 dot. So what you may be able to do for this stage is that the area is area 1 plus area 2 plus area 3. Write them all out. They're not very long sentences to write out. So it would be a half times 42 times 60 times sine 56 plus a half times 37 times 60 
times sine 106 plus a half times 42 times 37 times sine 98. And then do it all in one step, getting a dot 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 equals something and remember it would be in metres squared for your area. Okay, I think that probably now gives you enough information that you can now go ahead and work on exercise 510, question 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. There's quite a lot of them because I want you to have a fair bit of practice doing some questions that are real life questions because these are the majority of the type of questions that you will see in the HSC. There's one other example that does a compass radial survey and all it does when it does its compass radial, when it's measuring its angles, is it would be exactly like this one here except that it actually instead of starting at one and then moving your way around and measuring each of the individual angles, it draws a north in and it just measures them as bearings around the way. Okay, so it just means that you need to, you'll need to know two of those angles to find one of them in the bit where the bearing line is, but the rest are exactly the same. And it may mean you have a running tally as a bearing rather than information given as each individual angle that you find. The, uh, the way of finding the perimeter and the way of finding the area will be exactly the same as using your cosine rule. This one here that we've done for the plane table survey for perimeter and then using the sine rule for the area of the sine rule for the area of the total um, field that you're finding.